Hey, everybody. Dom Castro, CMS Wire Managing Editor with our latest CMS Wire Contributor interview. Today, it's going to be Sanjay Sarathi. He is the VP of Developer Experience for Cloudinary. What's going on? Hey, Dom. Thanks for having me on the show. It's great to have you uh, get the faces behind the contributions to cmswire.com. You've been contributing very consistently, articles getting a lot of buzz. Um, so we're happy to have you. We're going to talk about something. I don't know if it's anyone's heard of it, but it's chat GPT. <laughs> yeah, it's just every once in a while it pops up on your Twitter screen, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. And like with anything, you you know, you have such a great way of of, you know, cutting through the hype and figuring out what are the practical applications of, of things like this. And you, you talked in 2022, we had a series talked about Web3 and what Web3 is mm-hmm. going to do. What's the future, you know, for marketing? How are we going to cut through all the hype with that? And, you know, it's 2023 and we really haven't seen many uh, use cases for that quite yet. Like a huge winning situation with Web3. First question is, are we going to see that with ChatGPT? You know, is it going to be a better and bigger trend in terms of practical applications? What do you think? Uh, well, I think based on all the conversations, even if you take something as simple as what teachers are trying to figure out with their students <laughs> yeah. and how they use it, uh, I think you're already starting to see some practical applications with even people not in the professional world. But in all seriousness, yes, I do think we're going to see applicability. And I think one of the things that's interesting about AI in general, not just the chat GPT expression of that AI, of those AI capabilities is the applicability across different use cases, across different functions in the professional world, whether you're in development or in marketing or in customer service, et cetera. So I think that's the part that's pretty exciting and when it comes to this sort of technology. Yeah, for me, it seems like the best use case of my time is is efficient is in the efficiency winning right i'm winning with efficiency with chat gpt because i am taking a 9000 word transcription from a podcast and putting it through the chat gpt engine and telling it to come up with some takeaways right, right. so i have a starting place for an article that requires a little intro in the podcast before we get into the massive transcription. So that time from the AI transcription service I use to putting that in the chat GPT engine, I'm telling you, it saves so much time. And the best thing I like about that is that it's my information. It's my interview. So it's pure, it's sourced, it's efficient. That's where I'm winning as a as an editor, as a journalist. I mean, do you, do you see similar uh, use cases with like marketers or, or yourself? No, absolutely. I think one of the things where this comes in handy is pattern recognition, which you just talked about, right? And, you know, if you're a marketer, nothing, nothing can take the place of firsthand original interviews with users or customers where you're getting uh, feedback on your product or service. But if you take, maybe hundreds of interviews like that and put them through chat GPT to say, what are the patterns that come out of that? That's really interesting, right? So it's not as if it's replacing a uh, the value of firsthand research, but it's an incredible comp- enhancement of detecting patterns from what those interviews are about. And you know, to your point about efficiency, you could spend hours reading through it and then yeah. underlining things and, yeah. and figuring it out. Or you could, you know, spend a minute pumping it through chat GPT or another tool. And uh, and I think then you, you come up with a hypothesis that you can either validate or reject. Yeah, well, let's face the fact. Sometimes we're, as marketers, editors, writers, we're listening to podcasts we did a couple months ago. Right. Yeah, Sometimes because yeah. they're in a queue, they're on a calendar. So frankly, we're re-listening to it to see what we discussed and yeah. coming up with that outline. And now you don't have to do that. Now, I will say, you know, it's it's not as simple as copy and paste in a 9000 word transcription. I haven't figured that out yet. Maybe I'm missing something. I can only do like 2,500 word chunks. Oh my, only 2,500 <laughs> words? Cancel chat GPT. Microsoft, yeah. take your $10 billion back. You know, yeah. But so so it's, you know, obviously I can't just have you noticed that I can't pump a whole (laughs) like dial. Yeah, yeah. I I haven't tried to pump a ton in, but yeah, 
yeah, having conversations where there are answers to very specific questions. So you have a question and then you get a, you know, a 500 word or 700 word answer. That becomes a lot easier because then you already have the original question and then you got 10 answers of 500 words. That becomes really interesting. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so I do think there, it's funny. I was, it's obviously become popular earlier this morning. I was trying to log in and it kept saying, sorry, it's overloaded. Wait. You know, I'm like, right. So, so we know it's, it's being used in a variety of ways. It is. Um, why don't you give our, our readers, uh, I mean, they're obviously in the article here. This, this video gets embedded into your latest article for CMS Wire, but why don't you give us a little gist uh, of the big takeaways from your from your latest piece uh, that has to do with ChatGPT? So I think there are a couple of points that, uh, you know, I wanted to make. One was as a, you know, I started my career as a marketer, right? I, I grew up, you know, uh, as a marketing uh, professional. And I think one of the things that I truly believe is that there's nothing that uh, is as good as firsthand conversations with users and um, your customers, et cetera, to, to really validate either assumptions you've made in your marketing message or assumptions you've made as part of your product uh, launch processes or your product itself. And so in my mind, one of the takeaways is ChatGPT and other AI tools like it, they're not necessarily a replacement tool for those for those important uh, things you do as a marketer, but they're an incredible enhancement tool, right? To to the point that we were both just chatting about, and if you can understand where you want to use ChatGPT to enhance things and figure out the efficiencies and uh, and testing of hypotheses, then I think your ability to get to market faster, to be more effective with your product launch processes, to understand which components might might be actually differentiated versus a me too. That's where I think ChatGPT can be uh, an incredible asset to, to your organization. Um, and you have to be careful though, at least in the current instantiation of ChatGPT, it's not a real time tool, right? It uses information from 2021. True. And, prior so you're it's not the best at getting real-time data validation in terms of what you're seeing in the marketplace it's uh but it does do a pretty good job of testing hypotheses based on its ability to track everything up to 2021. Yeah, right. That's a great point because I think a lot of marketers, content creators, PR people are looking for data to support their thesis, right? Behind right. product release, you know, customer experience professionals are struggling with this. In fact, 86%, well, don't go to chat GPT for that because that's going to be old data, right? You know, uh, give me, give, like, it, it's so tempting though, to say, give me some statistics that support that voice of the customer is a troubling issue. And it's going to be nice and pretty. It's going to be woo, all these statistics. You you can even ask for the source of that information. It will give you the source. But like you said, it's going to be a little two or three years old, right? So for me, it's about putting in current data and saying, analyze this data. So it's right. a 2023 report um, and they can analyze that or just go to, you know, that old fashioned system there. What's it called? Uh, go it begins with a G. Uh, <laughs> oh, a Google. Mm -hmm. Or you, can, yeah. <laughs> you can still go old school. And I can't believe Google is old school now. Um, go old school Google. And it, is that something you're watching too? Because I think, man, those, you know, you I read a story about China's Beidou. I'm probably not pronouncing it right. They're, they have a search engine that they are hinting that they might put ChatGPT in and have some kind of integration. We know Microsoft's intentions with ChatGPT and Bing, OpenAI, yeah. that relationship. Um and then Google's sitting there with no response yet. So what's a marketer to do with all these, or a content creator with all these, you know, uh, convergent forces here with, with search? Is, is, is search going to be drastically changed by the end of 2023? I don't know if it's going to be drastically changed just given, uh, just given how much marketers have invested thus far in search, I think we'll start seeing, and I don't know what it will look like, the 
the beginnings of a change in that experience starting towards the latter half of this year. Because if you think about the relevance of SEO to discoverability, for example, one of the things that's important in my work currently is this concept of discoverability, right? How can developers and potentially marketers find and take action on content that um, that's relevant to them? Today, it's 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 driven off what Google has done via an algorithm. But if discoverability happens a different way, if in fact you're getting answers through chat GPT in a way that isn't a search result uh, on Google, what then does that do to the entire SEO market? What then does that do to the entire way you're defining content on your website? Uh, in terms of articles you put out. Uh, so it, it, there are some really interesting implications long-term. I don't know if we'll see that in the first half of 2023, but I think there's some really interesting things that marketers, developers, a, a variety of people in this field have to think about for the latter half of the year uh, that I think uh, will make for some interesting viewing and, and interesting changes in infrastructure as well. Shame on us for thinking Google won. They're still in the race. They're still in the race. Uh, absolutely. But very much so in the race. Um, because at the end of the day, right, you're actually still if you're if you're if you want your content to be discoverable as a marketer, as PR team, you're still you Google still owns you in that sense. Yeah. Right. You're not writing SEO for Chat GPT quite yet. Correct. Correct. We might be uh, now. We, we might, might be, be <laughs> and it's really interesting. I mean, a little anecdote from even our developer team, right? So our developer team, our R and D engineers, you know, wanted to test whether Chat GPT would be accurate in portraying the way it, the APIs, our APIs, yeah. would present themselves in in Chat GPT, and there's some errors there, but they were quite impressed with the level of detail that Chat GPT. You know, it had sucked in all our API endpoints. It had sucked in all the various components of our API, which is all public information. Yeah, and spat it out in relatively comprehensible information. So again, discoverability from a developer perspective, if you've heard about Cloudinary but you're not sure if it can help you or not help you, becomes yeah. interesting. All of a sudden, you. Instead of asking Google, you're asking ChatGPT how to do something. And that has implications, again, for businesses uh, beyond Cloudinary. Yeah, absolutely. Well, great chat. Um, we This is, you know, if we were chatting about Web3 last year at this time, it would it would be exciting. But I'm telling you, I haven't, nothing has, no trend has immediately impacted like my day-to-day like chat GPT and, and all these generative AI tools that are on the market. Now, AI in general, um, you know, I haven't done anything practical with web three right now. You know what? Well, we've written articles about it, right? We've right. published your articles about it. That's, that's something tangible, but as business outcomes, not, not quite. Right. Yeah, so correct. it's amazing how this has taken off. Um, we'll see what uh, 2024 will bring <laughs> something different where chat GPT might be the old news. Um, Sanjay Sarathy of uh, Cloud and Airy, can't thank you enough for being a CMS Warrior contributor. Uh, we're looking forward to more content throughout 2023 following that. Uh, maybe you can be the eyes in the chat GPT sky for us. What do you think? <laughs> that sounds a little, <laughs> little yeah. unnerving to a few people. <laughs> but I appreciate the conversation, Tom. Always, always fun to have conversations like this. So thank you very much. All right. Great to have you. Enjoyed it. Have a good one. Yep. You too. Thanks.